Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, to our ongoing study in the Church Dogmatics by Carl Bart. We are looking at Part 4, the Doctrine of Reconciliation. We've moved into Study Edition 30, the final volume of the Study Edition. We're looking at uh, paragraphs 74 and 75, the foundation of the Christian life. We just finished a two-part teaching on spirit baptism and now we're going to take a look at uh, the introductory lesson on water baptism which is very short very brief and then Bart gets into a deeper discussion of water baptism but he begins with a very very brief introductory lecture on uh, this follow-up to spirit bat baptism with water baptism but uh, we'll take a look at this introductory lesson and then uh, we'll pick up with the uh, in-depth study after this. If you take a look at block one, we're going to look at uh, baptism with water as inaugural event. The twofold foundation of the Christian life as baptism consists of uh, objective baptism in spirit as the divine enabling to make possible free decision, which we discussed. Subjectively, baptism in water becomes the human decision within the event of divine change. So it is very much uh, an overall event of divine change, but it includes the objective spirit baptism and the subjective water baptism. Now the deeper aspects of these two baptisms consist of uh, in spirit baptism it equals God's address to man with the transforming word of Christ. In water baptism man turns toward God and the closest call in Christ. The event of divine change as these two baptisms summons man to the uh, resolve of will and uh, to a response in the yes of graceful works. So we are enabled, but we are also summoned by the word in Christ, by the closest call, to the uh, outpouring of a faith as a verb in uh, the yes of graceful works. Now in note two, the event of divine change leads to uh, these works of faith in response, it's our first step of New Life Act. It's the reorientation of our life in ethical turn that will correspond to divine promise in the Christ event. It is also the ratification through works of our surrender of discipleship as being genuine. It is an interpenetrating grace into our conviction, our base of conviction. It affects our will. It affects our emotion. So it is, uh, fundamentally, it is a Christian modeling. It's our exemplary obedience to Christ. It's a Christian modeling. Now, note three, the event of divine change and the works of faith both represent the basis and the goal of genuine Christian baptism. It's a signifying, as a baptism, we signify our baptism into the history of Christ that took place for us and uh, works are defined as faith becoming a verb instead of only a noun. So it's a signification, it's works, it's correspondence to the divine event of change in the atonement of Christ. And that gives us our first uh, inserted triad in that uh, first block of the theoretical. We begin with the event of divine change, which uh, is twofold. It's spirit baptism and water baptism. It leads to an outpouring of our works of faith and Christian modeling, which ratifies our discipleship as being genuine. And those both equal what it means to be baptized into the history of Jesus Christ, to live in signification and correspondence to the history of Christ. So you can see that even though we're looking at just introductory content here, Bart gives us a great deal of uh, specific content in the theoretical block. 
Now we're going to move on to the concrete. We're going to take a look at block two. This baptism into the history of Christ is concrete corresponding change. And in this one, Bart just uh, consolidates things by giving us the ten aspects of uh, aspects of a uh, concrete exegetic, exegetical understanding of baptism. So he gives us ten aspects of what the scriptures have to say about baptism. It is power. Baptizine originally meant to overpower the old man and to empower the new man. It is change in the first century. Baptism always represented genuine change in one's concrete public station, in the, the concrete reality. It only started becoming the noun of baptisma within Christianity. And then four, it is ecclesiastical. It was inaugurated at the very outset of the church. It is ethical. It was considered by the church to be a normative command. It is attestation. It arises as ethical attestation of the Christian message. But it's always subordinated to the event of divine change and spirit baptism. And Bart says it uh, almost exclusively is understood within the context of Christian ethics. It is our resolve. It's perceived as that which man owes in his resolve of obedience to the promise in Christ. So now we can move on from that inserted theoretical triad. We can take a look at the inserted concrete triad. And the concrete triad is going to be baptism, which is a powerful change exhibited in our public life with others as empowered new man, putting on the new man. Second, it is a baptism as a sign, as a mark of attestation to Christ, to the Christian message of the gospel, which is basically attestation to the history of Christ. And that leads to uh, our resolve of will with uh, this uh, event of divine change. Our resolve of will becomes aligned according to the Kefali alignment of Christ from above, from his lordship, and we live within a true event of divine change in our correspondence with our resolve of will. And this theoretical moment and the concrete moment take us on to block three. In block three, we want to take a look at an uh, inaugural event and corresponding within Christ's history. Always leads to awakening in the spirit. And it's through the candidate's recollection and expectation. It's a choice by the candidate. It's an ethical hastening toward baptism. It's always a free and deliberate event. It includes uh, three essential moments. Number one is the petition. The candidate asks for baptism because of their forward continuance in the knowledge of Christ. Second, it is recognition. The candidate seeks the confirmation and the recognition of the church body through public attestation and prayerful thanksgiving. And that reaches identification. Petition and recognition reach identification in our new name as the congregation accepts the candidate's faith as equal to their own faith. So baptism is always, always petition, recognition, identification. It is always petition, recognition, identification. Now if you look at note three uh, in block three, recollection and expectation and the three essential moments lead to genuine membership into the body of Christ and into the body of the charismata, the spiritual gifts. It begins with that hastening toward baptism in our recollection and anticipation of the kingdom of Christ. Then we take up petition, recognition, and identification and reach uh, entrance into the true body of Christ. We reach membership in the body and we live with Christ as the Kafali Lord and alignment of our life. So this is a very, very brief 10-page lesson, 37 to 47. It's just the introduction, and then we're going to get into the three major in-depth topics for baptism. 
but this lesson uh, gave us the diagram, the introductory diagram of being baptized into the history of Christ, of that resolve of will that uh, comes about through the divine change, and then uh, taking up the petition, the recognition, and the identification of the event to reach true membership in the body of Christ. So everything is a is an introductory trajectory toward participating in the history of Christ. And we participate in the history of Christ by becoming a member of the body of Christ and subordinating ourselves and our actions and our ethic to Christ as the kafale head and alignment of our life and of our church body. So it's all headed toward ecclesiology for Bart. After all, this is church dogmatics. It's all headed toward the church of the called out ones. And uh, we reach it through the uh, spirit baptism and water baptism, which will eventually pass through petition, recognition, and identification. And we're going to pick up next time with the first in-depth teaching on baptism, which will begin at page 48.